All right, so you see uh, I am continuing with uh, this uh, motivation for Zalkman's lemma, all right. And uh, so, so let us, uh, uh, so let me recall uh, what we were doing. Um, so I will, I will, let me use a different color. So basically uh, you are trying to understand uh, uh, you know the behavior of a normal family at a point, okay. Uh, that is the, to understanding that is the, you know the key to understanding the statement of Zaltman's lemma, okay. How does a normal family, uh, normal family of meromorphic functions, how does it behave at a point, at a given point. So, uh, so you know uh, the, uh, the important outcome of this analysis is that you know you can characterize normality at a point and a normality at a point is defined as normality in a neighborhood of that point, in some neighborhood open disk surrounding that point, okay. And then uh, so you see this means that normality can be defined locally and it is in fact a local property like analyticity, okay. So uh, we start with the family script f, uh, these are these are meromorphic functions defined in a neighborhood of the point z0, I am assuming the point z0 is in the complex plane, it could have been also a point in the extended complex plane namely it could have been the point at infinity, okay. All arguments will work but you will have to make the right modifications, you know how to do that uh, because we know uh, uh, how to deal with the point at infinity uh, and taking infinite limits and things like that, okay. So um, alright. So, well, we, we uh, what I told you last time is that uh, uh, you start with this uh, family script f uh, and uh, uh, what you can do is uh, given a function small f in script f, okay, uh, you want to study that function in uh, a, a neighborhood of the point z0, okay. So what you do is that you know you take this, you take this neighborhood of this point. Uh, which is actually uh, it is a disk centered at z0 radius rho, okay. You take this, you take this neighborhood and I am also assuming that the boundary of that disk is in the domain uh, where the functions are defined, okay. So <coughs> uh, and the reason is why, I, the reason why I am including the boundary is uh, uh, because I, I want a compact set, okay. Uh, uh, the, the disk along with the boundary forms a compact set, it is a closed and bounded set. Mm, and well, uh, so suppose I want to study uh, a particular function small f in the family script f uh, at the its behavior very close to the point z0, then what I do is I zoom, I, I zoom into the point z0 and try to study the behavior of the function and how do I do this zooming? I do the zooming in this in this way, so I define this, this zoomed function here, okay, g, so given f. I zoom f to get a new function g, okay. And what is this? Uh, what is this zooming? You are zooming the function f centered at z0, uh, and uh, the zoom factor is 1 by epsilon, where epsilon is supposed to be a positive, small positive quantity, so that 1 by epsilon is large. Uh, in fact, epsilon is to be taken less than rho, okay. And uh, uh, then you define this new function, uh, you define this, this new function, which is. Uh, uh, for for this f, you define this function g, which is a zoomed function. G is uh, 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 just uh, you 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 take f, look at its behavior at in a in a uh, in a in, in a small disk around z0, and then you and then you zoom the behavior by a factor uh, one by epsilon. Okay, and you you so what you do is that uh, uh, so this is how the zooming is defined. The zoom function g of zeta is f of z0 plus epsilon zeta which means that actually what you have done is you are actually translating z0 to the origin, okay. And then what happens is that uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, the, the uh, this whole disk centered at z0 radius rho uh, along with the boundary translates to a disk centered at the origin uh, with radius rho by epsilon, okay. So 1 by epsilon is the scaling factor. And mind you, you should think of it like this, <laughs> epsilon is uh, small, so 1 by epsilon is la ra large, so rho by epsilon is greater than rho, so you have actually zoomed, okay. And so the, 
So, the behavior of the zoom function is being studied here okay and in, in, in this disk and well uh, uh, and I am calling this zoom function g. Um, so, this is a very very simple thing and the point is that uh, the difference between f and g is just a is, is just a uh, uh, you know it is a bilinear transformation it is actually uh, 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 it is translation uh, and uh, it involves a translation it involves a scaling okay. So, what you have done is you are you are you have taken the variable zeta you have scaled it by epsilon okay you have multiplied it by epsilon uh, mind you epsilon is a positive real quantity and then you have translated by z0 okay. So, the g and f are of the same uh, type of function okay uh, g is analytic if at uh, g is analytic if and only if f is analytic g is meromorphic if and only if f is meromorphic and whatever if, if, if g has a pole at a certain point then f will also have a, a pole of the same order at the corresponding point okay. So, um, and conversely so g and f are literally the same function except that you have made a change of variable all right. But the point is that g is a close up look of f it is you, you, you are looking at f very close in the in, in a neighborhood of z0 that is the whole point okay. Now uh, what you do is that uh, this is this is what you do if you have a single function but what you could have done is you could have done this to a sequence of functions. So, the point is uh, if I knew that this family script f is normal then um, uh, suppose you assume that the family is normal in in, in this uh, in this closed disk which means actually it is normal in a, in an in an open set which contains this closed disk including the boundary okay. Uh, and you know uh, suppose this family is normal uh, you know normality is the correct notion of compactness uh, that we require uh, normality actually means uh, uh, normally sequentially compact it means that given any sequence you can find a subsequence which converges normally okay. So, uh, converges normally means converges uniformly on compact subsets. So, so assuming that the family script f is normal and I want to study the behavior of the family uh, at a given point z0 okay. Uh, so, uh, if I take a sequence fn in this family then you because of normality you can find a subsequence fnk uh, that will converge uh, normally uh, on this uh, disk in fact it will converge uh, uniformly on that disk because uh, that is a closed disk okay. Uh, normal convergence means it is uniform on compact subsets and uh, this disk centered at z0 radius rho is uh, is you know uh, uh, it is a compact subset. And uh, again uh, you at the back of your mind you should remember that you know this this uh, this argument will work even if z0 is a point at infinity the only thing is that if z0 is a point at infinity you will have to think of this you should write this disk uh, uh, you know uh, 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 if you want with the Euclidean metric uh, not with the if, if you want with the spherical metric or you must uh, invert the variable and look at a neighborhood of 0 okay. So, uh, uh, so you can deal with the case uh, when z0 is the point at infinity also okay. But in any case uh, given, given this sequence fn I have this subsequence which converges normally. So, uh, let me call the limit function as f and uh, then we have already seen this whenever you take a normal limit of meromorphic functions the limit is either identically infinity or it is meromorphic okay. And now look at what happens uh, uh, to the zoomed functions. So, if f n k converges to f normally then the zoomed functions uh, for the sequence will converge to the zoomed function of the limit okay. So, <coughs> this is uh, this is obvious okay because uh, the difference is only a uh, 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 the, the, the difference is just a change of variable given by a bilinear transformation consisting of a scaling and, an, uh, and a translation okay. So, uh, so this g and case will converge normally to g okay and all this is happening mind you uh, because your zoom uh, your zooming uh, factor is 1 by epsilon it is all happening here it is hap happening in this in this open disk uh, centered at the origin radius rho by epsilon which is greater than rho okay. And, um, well uh, this is where it is happening uh, now you see uh, the the point is that whenever uh, a family of uh, meromorphic fun functions converges uh, then the family of spherical derivatives will, will also converge okay. Now this is just saying that you know the the uh, 
taking the spherical derivative will preserve the the normality the convergence and the normal the normal convergence okay so f and k converges to f normally so what will happen is that the you will get this which is that the the spherical derivative of f and k converge normally to the spherical derivative of f okay and uh, and we we already uh, uh, know that uh, because f and k converges normally to f g and k converges normally to g all right and therefore the spherical derivatives of the g and k's uh, g and k hash uh, hashes they will converge normally to g hash okay and uh, the, but the point is that you see the the original family that the the, the family script f you you assumed uh, is normal so this is this family script f is normal and uh, marty's theorem tells you that uh, you know uh, uh, that a family is normal if and only if the spherical derivatives are uh, normally uniformly bounded okay and and since we are already looking at a compact set okay there is a uniform bound uh, for all the derivatives uh, the spherical derivatives of the functions uh, in the family mind you you have to use spherical derivatives because the functions in the family are not analytic functions they are meromorphic functions so you uh, you you can't you can't talk about a usual derivative at a pole okay uh, but then you can talk about spherical derivative at a pole so uh, by marty's theorem uh, the uh, Marty's theorem, mind you, is, uh, uh, tells you that uh, normal sequential compactness is equivalent to uh, normal uniform boundedness of the spherical derivatives. Okay, and it is a generalization of the, the Montel's theorem for analytic functions, which says that uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, normal sequential compactness is is uh, uh, equivalent to uniform boundedness, normal uniform boundedness of the original family. Okay, and uh, uh, but the point is when you go to Marty's theorem you uh, go to uh, from the uniform boundedness of the normal uniform boundedness of the given family you switch to uh, uh, the normal uniform uh, uh, boundedness of the family of spherical derivatives okay that is the that is a quantum jump that you make from uh, uh, Montel's theorem for analytic functions to uh, uh, when you go to uh, Marty's theorem which is for meromorphic functions. So, uh, so, so there is this uniform bound m which works for all functions in the family uh, uh, script f. So, it will work also for these f n k's uh, it is a bound for uh, not the functions but it is bound for the derivatives okay the spherical derivatives. So, all the spherical derivatives of the f n k's are bounded by m and then well uh, what happens is um, therefore, now if you take the limit. Uh, so, there is a chain rule that is that is that is that is working here uh, there is a chain rule the spherical derivative of the zoomed functions g and k hash is, is, is epsilon times the spherical derivative of the f and k uh, 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 the spherical derivative of the g and k is, is epsilon times the spherical derivative of the f and k because this uh, so the uh, you know uh, uh, so you know the, the, the idea is that uh, you are you are you are you are you are zooming by a factor 1 by epsilon okay you are going closer to the point uh, uh, by uh, you are zooming into the point by a factor 1 by epsilon okay but then the spherical derivative uh, the spherical derivative becomes smaller okay the spherical derivative gets multiplied by the factor epsilon mind you epsilon is a small quantity so multiplying by epsilon makes the quantity smaller okay whereas uh, 1 by epsilon is the zooming factor. So, you as you zoom closer your your spherical derivative uh, uh, is going to become smaller okay that is what is happening okay. So, for the zoom function uh, the uh, if the original functions have this bound m then the zoomed functions have the bound epsilon m and then uh, because the zoomed functions g uh, the, the spherical de derivatives of the zoom functions uh, converge normally to the spherical derivative of the limit. Uh, function which is uh, the zoomed limit function what it will tell you is that the the limit function also uh, if you take its spherical derivative is bounded by this epsilon time sign okay now uh, now the point is that you know you you uh, all this happens in uh, in the in this domain which is uh, uh, this the, the the disk center the origin uh, radius rho by epsilon right and mind you uh, you must you must remember that as i make epsilon smaller and smaller and smaller i am zooming closer and closer to the point z not but then the the zoomed functions are uh, in larger and larger 
disk centered at the origin because rho by epsilon becomes larger and larger as epsilon becomes smaller okay. So uh, now the point is that you repeat this game okay uh, by changing the zoom factor okay. So what you do is instead of taking single epsilon you take a sequence of epsilons uh, which go to 0 okay a sequence of uh, which, which go to 0 uh, uh, of course from uh, from the right namely that you take sequence of positive epsilons that go to 0 okay. So if you do if you if you repeat the game with that what you do is that now you know uh, uh, the nth function g n uh, okay uh, well uh, I think I have not written it correctly the last time uh, the nth function g n uh, is the is the is the uh, is is the zooming of the nth function f n uh, by the factor 1 by epsilon n uh, centered at z0 with the variable zeta. So I sh there should have been an fn here alright. So gn uh, is the zooming of fn alright but the only thing is that now the zooming factor is, is also dependent on n okay. So fn is zoomed by a factor 1 by epsilon n and I am calling it as gn okay. Just uh, what we did some time ago was keep, keeping all these epsilon n's the same the same epsilon but now I am making the epsilon n's smaller as n becomes larger okay. Uh, well um, so if I do this what happens is uh, mind you uh, the uh, if I make the epsilon n smaller then the domains on which uh, the zoom functions work uh, 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 that these domains become these domains become bigger okay. So you know so I get this uh, I get these uh, domains okay. Uh, uh, mod zeta lesser than uh, well there, there was a I think there was a row well, there was a row there was a row there uh, mod zeta less than rho by epsilon n and these uh, these are big these are increasingly uh, larger disks as epsilon n goes to 0 these disks cover the whole plane okay and in fact as n um, uh, as n that means as n tends to infinity you are getting a uh, uh, you will cover the whole plane in particular you will cover any compact subset of the plane. So what you can say is that the zoom functions g n uh, uh, you know you can talk about normal convergence uh, on the whole plane okay. So actually what happens is that the uh, 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 anyway uh, 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 as before the f n k's uh, will converge to f okay and therefore the f n k hash will converge to f hash uh, where hash denotes the spherical derivative and then the corresponding zoom functions g n k hash will converge to g hash all these convergences are all normal okay. But the only thing is that this when you come to the zoom functions this, this normal convergence is on all of c it is on all uh, on the whole complex plane because now you are you have, you have covered the whole complex plane you have covered every compact subset of the complex plane by a sufficiently large disk centered at the origin where uh, that means all the g n's all the g n k's beyond a certain uh, k they are all defined uh, 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 on any compact subset beyond a certain stage okay. So uh, fine so you have this uh, and, and the point is that uh, uh, you know the, the g n case uh, uh, if you take the spherical derivatives they are they are bounded by epsilon n k times the, uh, the bounds for the original functions which is m okay. And therefore uh, this limiting argument will tell you that the, the limit function g hash uh, the limit function g if you take its spherical derivative it has to be 0 and therefore you get a you get a constant function on all of c okay. So you see the, the point is therefore you know as you as you as you go closer and closer and closer uh, to a point and look at the zoomed functions okay then the zoomed functions uh, they, 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 they tend to become constant that is what it means okay the zoom functions become constant. So you know to sum up all this uh, uh, all I am saying is that you take you take a normal family you take a point uh, where the family is normal uh, and, and then what happens is that as you uh, you, you take any sequence uh, of uh, in that family uh, you can always find a convergence of sequence if you study it at that point okay then the zoom functions will uh, you know they, they, they will tend to a constant function that is the whole point okay. And Zalkerman's lemma is all about 
you know being able to find uh, zoomed functions which converge to a non constant metamorphic function okay. uh, so uh, something uh, something opposite to this happens okay so uh, what i want to do first is that i need to you know first of all tell you that i can repeat this argument uh, with uh, not just one point z not but i can even take the the uh, sequence of uh, points tending to z not okay so now what we do is now now take uh, now take a sequence uh, 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 ezn going to z not in say the same uh, uh, disk mod z minus z not less than or equal to rho if you want okay uh, well for that matter if you take any zn uh, sequence zn going to z not uh, the sequence beyond a certain stage will lie in that disk okay but i am assuming uh, uh, this whole sequence lies in that closed disk centered at z not radius rho okay and uh, what you do is now you 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 zoom at each zn okay see all this time we were zooming only at z not but now what you do is you zoom at each each zn so you know the uh, so you define uh, 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 gn uh, uh, of zeta to be the zooming of you zoom the function fn uh, but now centered at zn and the uh, you know the zooming factor is 1 by epsilon n and the new variable is zeta so so this means that gn of zeta is uh, well uh, it's fn of uh, ezn plus uh, uh, well uh, uh, epsilon n times zeta so this is the uh, this is the thing but then i have to worry about uh, uh, um, one have to, one has to worry about where this will uh, 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 what, what about the domains of the gns okay uh, uh, you will have to worry about that but the point is that e essentially as n tends to infinity you are coming closer and closer to z0 so the domains of the gns is going to again cover uh, the whole complex plane okay so uh, you one can write out uh, the uh, the details for that uh, so you know the the so the so the picture is like this the picture is that you know so i have uh, uh, you know i have this uh, uh, z0 and you know there is so there is a zn and then i have this uh, so inside z0 there is this, this big disk uh, uh, with with radius uh, rho uh, where i am where where i am concentrating uh, i am concentrating my attention uh, and of course uh, even the boundary is included uh, though i am putting a dotted line uh, uh, well and and what i am doing is at zn i am taking a you know uh, i am i am taking a smaller disk uh, uh, radius uh, uh, epsilon n okay and uh, well and then you know so zn is uh, zn's are tending to z0 so well zn plus 1 is closer to z0 if you want and there is uh, it and then i am taking a much smaller disk and uh, uh, the radius of that disk is epsilon n plus 1 okay so you know i am coming i am taking smaller and smaller disks uh, about points which are going closer and closer and closer to z0 okay and the point is that uh, on on this i have this zoomed function okay and and then if i go to zn plus 1 i have another zoomed function it is gn plus 1 of zeta and this is fn plus 1 centered at zn plus 1 uh, 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 yeah, so it's epsilon n plus one theta. So this is just the zooming uh, of f n plus one centered at z n plus one with a factor one by epsilon n plus one and the variable theta. Okay, so I have these zoom functions. Okay, and well, of course, you know I'll have to assume that uh, the epsilon n's are uh, chosen in such a way that the uh, the disk. Uh, uh, the, 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 the disk centered at zn uh, uh, radius epsilon n is within my big disk uh, centered at z0 with radius rho okay but that will happen eventually even if you did not assume it beyond a certain stage it has to happen okay but we assume therefore without loss of generality that this happens that the diagram is uh, uh, like uh, we have already shown it so you know for example uh, well you know uh, uh, so if you take uh, uh, so I am assuming that if you take z1 then I am taking a, a, a the epsilon 1 that I am taking is 
uh, such that the disk centered at z1 radius epsilon 1 lies inside this big disk centered at z0 radius rho okay and the point is that if this does not work I can replace the epsilon i's by some epsilon i primes uh, which I can calculate okay. So, um, uh, the, the, the condition I want is that you know uh, 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 the, the distance uh, of z0 to uh, any point of the disk should not be greater than rho okay it should be less than rho that is the condition I want. So, uh, well let us assume that the picture is like this all right you do we do the same uh, calculations as before you see f n uh, the the you know you have this f n case uh, they converge normally to f uh, uh, they converge normally to f uh, on on uh, normally uh, this is normally uh, and uh, uh, well uh, and and what happens is that you will you will therefore get that the, the spherical derivatives will converge to f hash normally and uh, the you will also get uh, that the zoom functions uh, uh, the zoom functions will also converge normally uh, to uh, uh, g and so will their spherical derivatives. Uh, okay, so uh, you will get all this as as before. Mind you, uh, the the only uh, thing uh, now is that you also change the center of the zooming. Okay, the centers of the zoomings are all different now. Okay, but uh, it doesn't that doesn't change the 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 uh, calculation for the spherical derivative. Okay, because spherical derivative for the zoom functions is with, res with respect to zeta. And as far as zeta is concerned, the zn's are all constant. Okay, so well uh, again, what you will get is that you will get that uh, uh, again you will get that uh, uh, you know the the original functions uh, f and k uh, their spherical derivatives are bounded by m, uh, uh, and and uh, uh, this will tell you that uh, the uh, the zoom the zoom functions uh, their spherical derivatives are going to be bounded by uh, epsilon uh, the corresponding scaling factor times m uh, I mean not scaling factor the corresponding epsilon times m. And if you take a limit uh, as n tends to infinity uh, you will get that the, the limit zoomed function which is the zoom, zoomed function of the limit function uh, that will uh, have a spherical derivative uh, 0. Uh, that is because the epsilon n case tend to 0 and uh, uh, m is a fixed constant positive constant and and uh, the moment you uh, and as before the moment you know that uh, the spherical derivative of meromorphic function is 0 it has to be constant. So, so, so this will tell you that g is constant on the complex plane mind you this constant could have very well been the constant value infinity that is allowed because we are in the context of meromorphic functions. But the whole point is now, now you have uh, you have got this uh, important uh, characterization. You take a point z0 where a family is normal okay. Then what happens is that you take any sequence of points zn going to z0 and you take a sequence of radii which are going to 0 the epsilon n's okay. Then given any sequence in the family you can find a subsequence such that if you take the subsequence and zoom it with respect to this sequence the zoom functions converge uniform uniformly on compact subsets of c that is normally on c to a constant function this is the behavior of a normal family at a point okay uh, a normal family in a neighborhood of a point okay and uh, the amazing thing is that uh, the whole point is that this characterizes normal families okay this is a this is by this uh, you can actually characterize normal families so, uh, uh, so let me so let me write this down, uh, and and the fact that uh, you can characterize normal families like this is actually the philosophy behind Zalkman's lemma, and the way it works is it tells you when this uh, is contradicted. So Zalkman's lemma will tell you that such a thing will not happen uh, if the family is not normal. Okay. So uh, so let me uh, write this. Uh, so we so proposition. 
proposition is well uh, uh, let uh, script f be normal at z0 which means that it is a normal family in an open disk containing z0 uh, uh, and in and, and of course i am you know uh, all my all my families of functions are meromorphic okay so uh, uh, so let me write here normal family of meromorphic functions at z0 okay given uh, any uh, sequence zn tending to z0 and any sequence of radii epsilon n tending to 0 plus okay uh, for any uh, uh, sequence fn in the family script f okay uh, we can find a subsequence uh, f and k such that the zoom uh, sequence of f and k with respect to z n and epsilon n uh, that zoomed sequence converges to a constant function normally on all of the complex plane okay uh, uh, g n k of zeta is equal to the zooming of f n k with respect to center z n z k uh, uh, radius 1 by uh, I mean uh, scaling factor 1 by epsilon k new variable zeta which is by definition uh, you just take f n k of uh, e z k plus epsilon k times zeta this is the zooming okay now uh, 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 such that if this is the uh, zoomed family uh, then uh, g n k converges to a constant normally <coughs> on the whole complex plane. So, this is the so you know this is the uh, characterization of uh, this is how normal families behave, behave okay and the the big deal about uh, so this is normality at a at a point okay this is normality at a point z0 which means uh, which by definition is normality in a small open disk containing z0 that's what it means okay and if you want to cover this to uh, uh, normality on a whole domain then you know you have to say uh, a, fun a family is normal on a domain if it is normal at each point of the domain okay you can you can define it point wise so uh, So now, now let me state Zalman's lemma, which will tell you, uh, uh, and and you'll appreciate uh, what it is all about. But you know, with all this background that I've given you, you will you will uh, you will see that Zalman's lemma is something natural to expect. Okay. So here is Zalman's lemma. And it's actually well, it's called Zalman's lemma, but it is actually a theorem. So what is the lemma? The lemma is about non. It's about uh, non-normality. Okay. See, I'll tell you in in you know uh, in in very short uh, 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 words. What we just saw is that if you have a normal family, then the zoom functions go to a constant. Okay. Zalman's lemma tells you that if you have a family which is not normal, you can get hold of a zoomed family of functions which will go to a non constant meromorphic function that is all that is the whole point ok. So, so let me write that of course you know you should always keep saying this in as little words as you can uh, so that you grab the main idea uh, but then of course when you write statements you will have to be you know you have to bring in lot of uh, uh, notation uh, you have to worry about lot of notation and then of course proofs are even more slightly complicated. But the point is that you should always be able to zoom out you know and say things in just a few words because that is how you will map it in your memory and remember it and so that you do not lose track of the, the idea 
okay. So, here is a lemma suppose uh, script f is a family of uh, metamorphic functions on a domain D. Uh, that is not that is not normal so here is a non normal family then what happens is that there exists a sequence uh, z n converging to z not in d and epsilon n going to 0 plus with and further a sequence f n in the family script f such that the zoom functions g n of zeta is equal to the zooming of the f n's uh, centered at the z n's. Uh, scaling factor 1 by epsilon n uh, new variable zeta namely f n of z n plus epsilon n zeta uh, converges <coughs> normally on c to a non constant to a non constant that is the whole point to a non constant meromorphic function. g on the whole complex plane such that ok uh, well uh, the, the fact that you know it is a non constant meromorphic function. So, you do not expect the derivative to be uh, uh, spherical derivative to be 0. Uh, so, the spherical derivative at the origin will be 1 and all the spherical derivatives is, is, is bounded by 1. So, this is Zalkman's lemma. So, it, it tells you see it is tells you that the behavior is exactly opposite to what uh, you saw for a normal family ok. So, we will try to prove this in the next uh, lecture.